Robotics. A robot. What does that mean to you? What you probably have in mind is something like this. Humanoid robots, or famous robots from movies like Star Wars. Or maybe actual robots, who was developed in Japan. It's the Honda Azimo. This robot is able to, to welcome you, to serve you a coffee. But the majority of the robots are designed in the US or in Japan. But actually, robots are designed everywhere around the world, even here in Belgium. And maybe it's why we are here. Yes, I said we, I mean me and my partners. Call it co-founders if you want. So let me first quickly introduce us. So everything started somehow five years ago. Four engineering students passionate about robotics. What you probably have in mind is something like this. A bunch of geeks stuck behind their computers designing robots all day. Well, I can agree. It's what, what, it's what we wear but a bit different. So we started by participating to a Belgian competition, Robotics Cup, and we won three times in a row, actually, and then we decided to go a step further and to go to the international con uh, competition. We, ended, we end up in Russia, competing against the best. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me competing against, against the best and finishing in the top tier. At that time, what we did was working on this robot. So I guess all of you, all of you see directly what is it for. No? OK, I agree. It can be challenging. So actually, long story short, this robot is able to play chess in less than 90 seconds on a square table. but. I guess nobody will never spend more than 20,000 euros just to get a robot like this in your living room playing chess. If it's the case, you may interest us, actually. So, <laughs> no, uh, I, I agree it's not usual, but it was and still is our passion. And so, as you can imagine, we turned this passion into our day-to-day -day job. So we created a company called Kimesis. We started that two years ago, and guess what? Today, we are 15 engineers working every day on designing robots with a full schedule for the coming year. So this shows that there is a will in change in the robotics environment. So I could talk about my passion all night, not all night long, but we have to keep it short. So we will start to, to talk about some autonomous robots completely independent that you can use in your, day to, in your daily life, that you and me can use. And then we will go a step further. We will see how robotics can really be a life changer for disabled people by connecting that to the nerves or even to the brain. So, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay, right. So, let's start. Change is everywhere, even if in a forest. So, a forest owner has to keep track of his forest. So, to achieve that, he has to manually measure all the trees and then write that on a notebook. So, what we were asked to do is to design a device which is able to do that automatically. So we thought about it and came out with a solution. Here it is. So this device is able to measure any tree in a forest automatically. And this is how it works. So you start by measuring the eighth of your tree, and then you simply measure the circumference of the trunk. So it works with a 3D camera embedded on the device. Then with all those data, the, the, it processes the volume of your, of your trunk. And then you just have to select the kind of tree that you measured. 
And we have, you have a complete track of your forest with a GPS position, the spaces, and the volume of your tree. Back home, you just have to upload everything on your computer. And then you can keep track of the growth of your forest. Or if you want to sell your trees, just to know the amount of wood that you get. So our next topic is related to golf. So I guess all of you recognize that it's a golf driving range. What's nice in a golf driving range is that you can hit the ball as far as you want. But the bad thing is that you need to get the ball back. So it's exactly what we were asked to do, to design a robot which is able to get the ball back all the way down from the field to the tee in front of the player. So nowadays, you can see on driving range those fancy tractors, which are actually often the, the target for every player. So, so we designed, it, we designed it a, a robot to achieve that, who's here tonight, actually. Hey, buddy, come here, don't be shy. Ah. Why would thing goes uh, well when it can be wrong, when it can fail? So I will just pull it and show you it. So th th this robot is able to move autonomously on a, on a driving range. Uh, it, it collects the balls thanks to, to plastic to, to, to plastic discs that you can see here. And when the balls are collected, they are just uh, collected in a tank. But when the tank is, is full, the robot simply goes back to its base to unload. No, yes, it's <laughs> here you can see a picture. I, I, I agree it's a, it's a bit different, but it's, the, 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 it's still a, a prototype, so it's evolving all the time. And then the robot just unloads his tank and recharge the battery um, at its base. And so after that, the balls are cleaned. And then with that kind of machine, uh, a machine for example, they are, bring back, they, they are brought back in front of the player, in front of the tee. So unfortunately, it's not working anymore, so I have to put it back there. Whoops. So now, we are going to talk about something completely different. So I guess all of you remember those sad events, who happened in Boston in 2013, the bombing attack during Boston Marathon, which sadly remind me those in Brussels. I'm going to tell you the story about this long lady, professional dancer called Adrienne, who ran the marathon this night, this, uh, that year, sorry. Unfortunately, she was injured, and the doctor had to amputee her left leg. Now, imagine yourself without a leg. She thought she would never dance again, but she was wrong. And less than a year after that, she was back on stage. Ring my bell, ring my bells Ring my bell, ring my bells Ring my bell, ring my bells Sometimes you love it, sometimes you don't Sometimes you need it, then you don't, then you let go Sometimes we rush it, sometimes we fall it doesn't matter, baby, we can take it real slow. So, let's get serious again. Maybe you can wonder why I'm talking about this sad story. Actually, I work on the, in the team who developed that prosthesis that she was wearing. Here you can see me on the right, on the left, sorry. 
with all my fellow PhD students at MIT. In the middle, you can see you, her, my professor. At that time, I was working on the next generation of bionics legs, robotics prosthesis. As part of, of my PhD, I, I did this, that work as part, of, as part of my PhD, but something that maybe you didn't notice is that you, her, my professor, is himself wearing both of those prostheses, is himself two feet amputee. So when he was 17, he decided to hike in Mount Washington in New Hampshire. And unfortunately, he was stuck in a blizzard during four days. After that, he had to be amputee due to frostbite. So he decided to work in technology, he became an engineer, and at the end, he became a MIT professor. Now, his lab is one of the world leader in the design of robotics legs. And it took more than 20 years to get there. Those prostheses are completely autonomous. So they automatically adapt when the, the, the patient want to walk, run, climb stairs, sit down. As you can see here on this video, it will dis decide to accelerate and the prosthesis will just accelerate. Then it stopped and the prosthesis instantly stopped also. The prosthesis has no idea in advance on what he wants to do. If he wants to climb stairs, he just has to, to start to do it. And then he can make a U-turn and coming back without changing anything on his prosthesis. Everything is fully autonomous. And that kind of technology can really be a life changer for amputees. Walk up, get on your heel to toe, like we'd normally just walk on level ground, try to walk right up the hill. Oh my God. Is it pushing you up? Yes, it's, I'm not even, I can't even describe it. It's pushing you right up. You guys just don't know what it's like not to have that. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I think it's just amazing. This lady can walk again, like you and me. So now, we saw autonomous devices. So I mean that all the control is embedded inside the device, meaning that everything is managed by the device. But if you think, you can maybe try to go further and to connect directly the device to the human body. So when you are amputee, there are still nerves which are there. And through those nerves, the brain can still send signals. And so if we are able to detect those signals, it's then possible to control a prosthesis just by the mind by connecting it directly to the neural system. Some research group did that. As you can see on this video, the prosthesis is directly connected to the passion arm. It can move it just by thinking about it. It's directly connected to its nerve. And for example, here it can cook again. It can carry some eggs without breaking it. Yes, I agree, at the end it's breaking it, but he, <laughs> he can cook again, it's, it, it changes life. And for beer lovers, look here, he can easily open a beer and hang out with friends. Imagine if you have to open this beer without the arm, you will put the beer here, try to do like this, maybe you will drop a lot on the, on the floor. Now, it, with that technology, you can just drink a beer like you and me. But, now, imagine that you are a victim of a heavy accident. You wake up at the hospital. You cannot move anymore. You cannot feel anything. You are quadriplegic. You are fully dependent on other people. 
The previous technology we saw cannot work anymore because when you're quadriplegic, it's a connection between your brain and your nerve, which is broken. And so if you want to detect those signals, we have to take them directly into the brain. So some research group did that with a monkey. You can see this small monkey has wires connected, connected in his head. And those wires are connected to a robotic arm. And here, just by thinking about it, the, the monkey has full control of, of the arm and can reach a target and grab it. So to achieve that, it took approximately six months because the, the neural connection have to, to adapt like a baby learn how to walk. But actually to achieve that, we, they just implanted, in, implanted a chip in the good area of the brain. And then this chip can send the, the neural signals to a computer which is, which is processing them. Which is, yeah, which is processing them, and, con and then can control the arm. This research has been made on animals because it's quite dangerous. It's a heavy surgery. You have to physically open the brain to put the chip. But imagine if one day we can do that with human, with quadriplegic people. It could really change their life. They did it. They did it. Here you can see the robotic arm grabbing a bottle of soda, a bottle of soda. And this arm is controlled by this lady, which is quite pleasant. And now you are seeing her taking a sip in this bottle on her own. And the first time it happened for 20 years. Look at her smile. It's incredible. And I think this is priceless. So what we saw tonight, it's not only robotics. It's not only technology, but a whole lot more. From fully autonomous devices, like the ball picker, the tree scanner, or the prosthesis from MIT, to robotic harm, robotics harm, connected directly to the human body, to, through the nerves, or even through the brain. So it really shows that the change can improve a lot our life. Human beings has the power to turn this knowledge into something good, or the opposite, to harm us. But we are convinced that this technology can bring a lot of improvement and a lot of good things. It's why we are not participating in any military issues. What I want you to remember tonight, just one thing, is that robotic technology can really improve and facilitate our, all of us, all our daily life. But soon, it will be a life changer for disabled people. Thank you.